I'm Betsy Bosdick, Common Sense Media's Executive Editor of Ratings and Reviews, and I am here talking with Nisha Ganatra about her new movie, The High Note, which is an official Common Sense selection for families. Hi. Oh, that's fantastic news. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> yes, thank you so much for joining us. Can you introduce yourself and tell us a little bit more about the movie? Yes. Hi, I'm Nisha Ganatra. I'm the director of The High Note. Uh, I am a, a common sense reader <laughs> and checker Great. for my two kids. Um, so yeah, it's very, um, it's, it's really nice to be a, to select a movie by you. Thanks for that honor. <laughs> oh, you're very welcome. Tell us a little bit about The High Note. What's the general story? The general story of The High Note is a story about two women, um, Grace Davis, played by Grace, uh, Tracy Ellis Rouse, who is a music icon. And Grace is sort of finding herself at a crossroads in her career where she's going to um, have to make a choice about following the easy path and, um, you know, taking the safe road or getting back to uh, taking a little risk with uh, writing a new album. And uh, Maggie, her assistant, is played by Dakota Johnson. And Maggie is also uh, at a crossroads where she is going to decide if she's going to keep being the assistant and taking the safe path or if she's going to step out from behind the shadows and take a chance at producing, which is her lifelong dream. Awesome. What was it that really drew you to this story and these characters in particular? Oh, I was really drawn to the story because the two uh, main characters are both really strong women, and I'm always uh, excited about that. And they're also women who are really dedicated to their work. Um, they're really good at what they do. They're unapologetic about it. Nobody's sort of um, giving their light to make anybody feel more comfortable with how excellent they are. <laughs> um, they also are being sort of told by the industry around them to uh, not rock the boat and just take it easy. And I think they both are at a point in their careers where they um, are going to have to take a big risk. So any movie that encourages women to take a risk and then greatly rewards the women for taking that risk is a movie I love to see. I think like Women are unfairly punished a lot in movies for taking risks or doing um, things that are in their own self-interest. And I think we just need movies that portray us as not villains for, for wanting to work and looking out for our own careers. And so uh, I just think that movie, that, that aspect of the characters was really refreshing and, and exciting to me. Yeah, that actually sort of plays into my next question, which is um, why... Why is representation so important in the media and how does that guide your choices as a filmmaker? Oh my God. Yeah. I mean, I became a filmmaker because of, of you know, underrepresented voices. I really just felt like um, I wasn't seeing the experience of people of color, first generation Americans, women that I knew who were really loud and boisterous and, and smart um, being represented. And it really frustrated me. So I got into writing and thought, all right, well, I'm not seeing it, and I love movies, so I'm going to make I'm going to make my own movies where I can see it. And so, um, I think that was what was a, a really big inspiration to me is just making sure I am helping center stories that aren't being centered and amplifying voices that are going unheard. That's like, mm, I, I guess, just my biggest inspiration to be a filmmaker because I guess you know, our culture is so film and TV oriented that you can't really shift culture without representation because if you don't first exist in film and television, then you don't exist in our society. So you have to sort of start at the first step of representation and then you get the diversity of stories of all the representation and just selfishly, it makes for better entertainment for everybody as well. Thanks. That's, that's, that's great. So as I... <laughs> When we got started, so we're, we're pleased to honor the high note with our common sense selection, meaning that we think it is a great choice for families with teens in this case. Um, one of the things we really love about it is its messages of perseverance. Do you think movies can inspire character strengths like perseverance in kids? Absolutely. I mean, I grew up watching these movies that told me to follow my dreams and that, you know, everything was going to work out. And I think, like, you need those stories. You need that hopeful, um, that hopeful movie message that tells you like um you might feel like this isn't for you in the world and it's kind of like if you see it you could become it you know i mean one of the things with high note i learned was that there were only three women in the history of the grammys that have been nominated for producer of the year and that was not okay you know so i just thought maybe there's a way to encourage and inspire a generation of women to get into music producing and that would just make better music for all of us right so 
it's kind of um, just one of those things where you, mm, I think you need to see it sometimes to believe it. And I like choosing to become a filmmaker. There were no messages to me to become a filmmaker. Nobody was sort of saying like, Hey, you first generation Indian American girl, like this is for you, this industry. But I think because there were other women directors that I could look to who were doing it and telling their stories, it really inspired me to do it. So I feel like this movie um, gives that message to you, like work hard, work harder than you ever thought you'd have to work. Yeah. Follow your dream and it's going to come out. You know, it's, it's easy for us to feel like music isn't for me, that the male dominated industries of film and television music, they're not for me, but they're for all of us. And we just have to bust in there. (laughs) Is there anything in particular you'd say to kids who uh, think they might want to be filmmakers or musicians? Yeah, you know, like one thing I loved about uh, Maggie's character is that she isn't trying to be the rock star. She's not trying to get on stage and be up in front of people and and have the camera pointed at her and getting the likes and getting the saves and getting all that. She's really um, ambitious about being a part of the creative process. And I feel like that's the goal. Like you want to live a creative life. That's really fun. It's really fun to be in the music industry. It's really fun to be a filmmaker. Um, but it's fun because it's creative and you're getting the joy of living a creative life. So I think rather than thinking, I want to be the biggest star in the world, I want to be famous, or I hope everybody watches this and I get all these followers. I think you want to put your focus on what am I creating? What am I putting into the world that's making it a better place? Um, what am I saying that no one has said before? And how do I not add to the noise that's already out there? But how do I um, bring attention to something that is meaningful and thoughtful and hasn't been said. And if you can't do that, then help an artist who is doing that. And you can be a part of the creative process by raising that artist up. You don't all have to be the center stage person that's like, look at me, look at me. That's not a worthy pursuit. (laughs) Well, that's my 10 year old who's convinced she's gonna be a uh, YouTube star slash baker slash fashion designer. She wants to be, uh, you know, all about her. (laughs) I wish I could get behind how YouTube is convincing kids that they're gonna make all this money on YouTube. Like I have said to so many kids, like, believe me, you are not gonna make a penny on YouTube. (laughs) If you you are gonna make a penny, you're gonna spend thousands to make that penny. And so, it's just such an interesting, I guess every generation has their one thing that is the, the pipe dream. And right. Maybe it's YouTube. Who knows? <laughs> so switching gears a little bit right now, we're all dealing with something that's even bigger than Grace Davis, the uh, coronavirus. <laughs> um, so a lot of families are probably going to be watching the high note, you know, to entertain themselves while they're at home. What are you, and you said your kids, what are you and your kids doing while you guys are stuck at home? What's keeping you connected? What's keeping you entertained? I mean, I think we're all sort of failing at our screen time, uh, <laughs> our screen time hopes and dreams. They all kind of went crashing down with the pandemic. Um, but I think like when I kind of turned the corner of my head and went, okay, there's just going to be more screen time. How can I do what, you know, the sort of child experts that I follow suggest, which is not cutting out the screen time, screen time, but making it um, something you're doing together and that you're talking about and discussing. So it's been a fun time trying to like bring a uh, movie night back and movies that um, I liked as a kid. It's, it's really stunning to see how many of them do not hold up right now. And what my kid is pointing out to me that doesn't hold up about them. Um, to have, them. have your kids write user reviews on common sense media. <laughs> oh, that's a really good idea. That's a really good idea. Um, yeah, maybe I'll turn them into little critics, which would be so cool. <laughs> but um, yeah, I guess we're doing that. We're um, playing a lot of board games and Uno has become a, a big resurgence in the house again. Um, Boggle is the one I'm currently trying to push them into oh, um, because I love it. It's How old are you? Such a fun game. I have a one and a half year old who can't play any of these things, but is very into painting right now. Um, and I have an 11 year old who is super capable of doing all of these things, but it's yeah. just a matter of motivating. Right. I hear that. <laughs> as you know. Is your daughter 10? Uh, yeah, I've got t- the 10-year-old daughter and a six-and-a-half-year-old son, and she is very self directed and he needs a lot more structure. Um, <laughs> and so then just sort of as a wrap-up, like what was your own favorite piece of media when you were a kid? Anything, TV show, movie, book? What did, what, what, what did you love as a kid? Wow. I was one of those weird kids that read a lot, but... Um, 
I was reading a lot of like graphic novels and comics and, you know, Calvin and Hobbes and that sort of thing was always, um, but I also really loved, um, my parents were from, or, or my parents are from India and they brought over these um, Indian comic books that were uh, the Hindu mythologies told in these comic books. And it's really how I learned a lot about Hinduism, I think, was reading these comic books over and over. So it's something I really love and I hope to, um, I, and I'm currently adapting to make into animated series for kids. Oh, cool. So that I can just bring that along because it's something I, I was just so into all the time. Oh, that's awesome. Very cool. Well, that is what I've got. So thank you so much for your time and thanks for um, thank you. being a fun film. Uh, I really enjoyed it. Thank you. And, and thanks for making commentons.org. It's such a great website. I always check it before I watch anything with them. So thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much. Thank you for your time and good luck with the movie.